I also have this handout link for you, so uh, you could print that out. And we are going to do two examples together on this thing, but two theorems in this section that are going to be on our AP test. We already covered intermediate value theorem, and now we got to talk about Rolle's theorem and mean value theorem for the derivatives there. Rolle's theorem says if you have three stipulations that are true, it has to be a continuous graph. So no breaks, no jumps or anything like that. You can't lift up your pen when you're drawing that. And differentiable. So differentiable is, is going to be smooth and curvy. So remember, it's not differentiable if you have an asymptote. It's not differentiable if you have like a corner point, like a triangle, like a corner point, like a sharp corner right there because of the multiple tangent lines. So, um, so pretty much when you see continuous and differential, it's got to be smooth and curvy, no breaks or jumps or gaps or anything like that, and no corner points. That's what that stuff means. Now, you're always going to see continuous on the closed interval, differential on an open interval, because at the endpoints themselves, you know, you got the vertical tangent lines right there, so something's not going to be differential there. So you typically will always see the open interval for the differential on these theorems. So three stipulations for Rolle's theorem to apply. Continuous differential, so smooth and curvy graph, and f of a is equal to f of b, which means you have two points. When you plug them in, the y values are the same. So if all three things are true, then there has to be a point. It's saying that there has to be at least one number where that derivative is equal to zero. So that's like where your graph levels off, where you have a horizontal slope, a horizontal tangent line. So notice here, smooth and curvy. So continuous and differential, smooth and curvy, continuous and differential. That's, that's perfect fine. No breaks, no corners or anything like that. That's, you know, <clears throat> so this is also continuous and differential. These first three are continuous and differential. And then notice, the third stipulation, f of a equals f of b. So at x equals a and x equals b, notice that I have two y values that are the same. Whatever this y value is, let's say that's negative one, both of those y values are negative one. To me, it's kind of a common sense theorem. If I have to go from this y value and I have to get back to that same y value without lifting up my pen, at some point, I'm gonna have to turn around and go in that same direction to reach that point again. So when I turn around and go in that same direction at that point, that graph level is off there, and there my derivative is equal to zero. That's all Rolle's theorem is saying. It, you, to get back from one point to the, that same y value, your derivative has to be equal to zero at least once. So on this one, the, the theorem just guarantees it at least once. This one, I have f of a is equal to f of b. So I got the same y value right here, and then notice there's one, two, three spots where that derivative is equal to zero. The guarantee says at least one number, and then what we'll do is we'll find, we could find, we could use algebra to find out what those x values were, what, what those x values are. And then right here, well, heck, that slope is always equal to zero. That derivative is always equal to zero right there because it's just a horizontal line. Now, sometimes people will misuse the theorem. They'll say, hey, Rolle's theorem is bogus because right here I have f of a equal f of b, but there is no spot where that derivative is equal to zero. I don't have a graph or a smooth, like a max or min or, you know, where it levels off or I have like a derivative is equal to zero point. Well, the thing is, Rolle's theorem doesn't apply to this because there are three things that must be true for the, that you got to satisfy the if part of that, you know, the hypothesis part before you go to that conclusion. So yeah, I have f of a equals f of b, and, but that graph is not a continuous graph and it's not differential there. So here, this, the Rolle's theorem doesn't apply because this graph is not continuous and it's also not differentiable. So it doesn't make sense to look for where the derivative is equal to zero, but the Rolle theorem guarantees if you got a continuous and differentiable graph and the y values are equal to each other, then that derivative is gonna be equal to zero. So let's do one example together. Remember on these theorem problems, you gotta be a little technical how you're doing that there. So we need to first, the directions will say, verify that Rolle theorem applies. And then after that, you're going to find the value of C guaranteed by that theorem. Now, if you have a polynomial, polynomials are friendly functions. They're always continuous and differential. They're always just smooth and curvy, no asymptotes or anything like that. So if you see a polynomial, you don't have to do any justification, but you do just need to write down that F is continuous and differential. Now, technically, a polynomial is continuous and differential forever from negative infinity to positive infinity. Sometimes if we have a trig graph, it might not be continuous all over the place, but if it's continuous and differential on our given interval, like in between one and four, that's what we need right there. Now, the way you can tell whether it's not differentiable, if in, instead of relying on the graph, let's say you had a fraction right here, and let's say you did a random derivative of your function, and you got like an x minus three, 
in that denominator. Well, wherever the derivative is undefined, that means the original graph is not differentiable there. So what you got to do is take your derivative always, and then wherever that derivative is undefined, that's where that graph is not differentiable. So if you were to set this equal to zero, I would get my f is not differentiable at x equals three. And if three is in that interval, then I say stop right away. I say Rolle's theorem doesn't apply because the graph is not differentiable at x equals three. And there's my derivative work to kind of know how I got that, right? And then you just move on to the next problem. That doesn't make any sense to go forward with that. But if I have this continuous to differentiable, notice that's one, two out of the three stipulations. Next thing I got to check for is f of a equal to f of b. So this is the a, this is the b. So I'm gonna take the one and the four, plug those into the original function and see if they're equal to each other. It doesn't matter what number they are, just they have to be equal to each other for this theorem to work. So if I plug in the one for the x, we are gonna get zero. And if I plug in the four for the x, there is 16 minus 20 is negative four plus four. I also get zero. So notice they don't have to equal zero. They just have to equal the same thing. So that's the third stipulation is I have the f of a equal to f of b. So since all three things apply, then that means Rolle's theorem applies. So these things together means Rolle's theorem applies. And so on a theorem problem, when they say verify that the theorem applies, you need to have those three things written down. You can't just do that stuff in your head and then go, go skip over to the actual part of the problem there. You got to write stuff down, all right? And then Rolle's theorem, the gist of it is we're going to now take the derivative and set it equal to zero. That's what it guarantees. It's a leveling off point. So now I'm just going to take the derivative which is a 2x minus 5, and I'm going to set that equal to 0. I'm going to solve that for x, and then we are done right there. That's it. You can just stop right after you find that x value right there. Next theorem is the mean value theorem. There are only two stipulations for this to apply. It just has to be continuous and differentiable. That's it. Any smooth and curvy graph, mean value theorem applies. Um, so you could tell whether the function is continuous or not. Like if your original function had a fraction and you look at where that bottom is equal to zero, wherever that bottom is equal to zero, that graph is not continuous there. It might be a removable or not removable discontinuity, a hole or a, an asymptote, but that's how you can tell whether it's continuous or not without looking at the graph, just looking at the function. Differentiable, you got to take the derivative and then figure out if that bottom is equal to zero, that means it's not differentiable. And if it's in an interval, then you just stop that theorem doesn't apply. But if it's outside that interval, then you can keep on going there. So what this is saying that there exists a number such that the derivative is equal to this average rate of change. So the derivative is your instantaneous rate of change. It's your slope at that instant. Like when we did the main definition of our derivative, that's the slope of the tangent line. So if you have this curve here, the slope of your tangent line is that, that slope there. And at some point, it's equal to the average rate of change. This is just your slope that you did in pre-cal, did your average rate of change. That's the slope of the secant line. So if I have a point at A and a point at B, and I plug that into the original function, the y values would be f of A and f of B. So if I found the slope of that secant line, that's just our slope formula right there. But if you got any smooth and continuous curve, this, the mean value theorem says the slope of this tangent line is at some point equal to the slope of that secant line. So the instantaneous velocity is equal to the average velocity at some point right there. So you need to, same directions here, we're gonna do one example together. I see a polynomial, so I'm just gonna write down f is continuous and differentiable. Now, if my original function had a fraction in it, I'm gonna set that bottom equal to zero, and if that bottom is equal to zero, x equals zero, well then I'm saying that the, the thing is not continuous in, that, in my interval, the theorem doesn't apply. If the bottom is equal to zero at x equals five, I can say it's continuous in between negative one and one. That's not even in my interval. To see if it's differentiable, I would have to take a derivative. And if my derivative has a fraction in it, set that bottom equal to zero. And if that bottom is equal to zero, that means your derivative is undefined, which is the same thing as saying your graph is not differentiable. And if that's at x equals something in between that interval, then, then you're going to say the theorem doesn't apply. But it is continuous and differentiable everywhere. And see, I don't need to worry about f of a equals f of b. So you're not going to see me on a mean value theorem plug in the endpoints like I did on roll A's theorem. I only need those two stipulations. Right away, this theorem applies. And so I'm going to take need the derivative. So let's go ahead and do that. That'd be 3x squared minus 2x uh, minus 2, my fault. All right, so there's our first derivative. And then so we need to just take mean value theorem. You need to take the first derivative and set it equal to this formula 
right here. So what I'm gonna do is work that out to the side. So this is my A, this is my B. So I'm gonna either go F of one minus F of negative one over one minus negative one. So this means I'll take the one, plug that in place for the X there. That's gonna give us a negative two. Then I'm gonna go minus, I'll take a negative one, plug that in place for the X there. That's gonna give us zero. And then minus negative is plus a positive. So that's gonna give us two on the bottom. So this is gonna give me negative two up top, two on the bottom. I get a negative one for that. So that's my average rate of change. And then, so we need to take the derivative. So roll ace there might take the derivative, set it equal to zero. Mean value there might take the derivative and set it equal to the f of b minus f of a over b minus a, slope form the average rate of change. So we're gonna just take the derivative, set that equal to the negative one, and then move that you have a quadratic now, so you guys should hopefully all know how to solve a quadratic. Um, when I add the one over, you're gonna get a minus one right there. And then we can go ahead and factor this thing. You know, occasionally you might have to use the quadratic formula. And then we're gonna get x equals a negative one third and a positive one. And then I purposely showed you this one because most of the time the answers that you get are both, or, or maybe just one's clearly outside the interval and one's clearly inside the interval, and then you just choose the one inside the interval. Um, I know what you think. So negative one third is clearly inside the interval. So that's gonna be our answer there. And then one, see how one is on the end point? Little technicality, see it says continuous on the, on the closed interval, differential on the open interval, because at the end points themselves, a graph is never differential. You're gonna have vertical tangent lines there. And notice it says there exists a number in the open interval. So I just wanna show you this one. This doesn't really happen all too often, but if you were to get one on the end point, it's not inside the interval, you don't include that as your answer. But that rarely ever happens anyways. There, most of the time, you'll get something inside the interval. Maybe you get two answers inside the interval, or one's inside and one's clearly outside, but then that's what you're finding right there. So the mean value theorem can be applied. There's a nice picture in our book that I'm not gonna show here, but I'm just gonna kind of talk about it. But if you have like a, like let's say you, you're you driving down the highway, right? You're driving down the highway, unless there, let's say there's a cop car stationed right here and there's a cop car stationed right there, well, if they're stationed in between each other, let's say you drive by this cop car, you know, let's say you spot that cop car and you slow down and you're only going like 60 miles per hour, right? Let's say the speed limit's like 60 miles per hour. Let's say you slow down and make sure you're going 60 miles per hour. And then you speed up a little bit in between. And then you go by this car, where you spot that cop car and you slow down again, you're only going like 60 miles per hour. So both times those cops clocked you at going the speed limit. But if they're, let's say they're like five minutes down the road or five miles down the road and they're on that, that radio and they're saying, hey, that red car or that blue car is like going down the road. If they, they, they put a stopwatch on that thing and, and so they could probably figure out if they wanted to, they could apply this mean value theorem on you and say, okay, you weren't speeding at that instant. You weren't speeding at that instant. But to get from this point to this point in that time that you just did, you had to be speeding at some point in that time to make it there. So then they could get you for, for speed and they could say your instantaneous velocity at some point was equal to your average velocity. So, uh, you know, at some point your instantaneous velocity might have been like 75 miles per hour and they get you for speeding there. But if a cop ever pulls you over and tries to like use the mean value theorem against you, you'd be like, no, I had, I had Mr. McGee for calculus there. I know my calculus for the mean value theorem to apply the curve had to be continuous and differentiable. And you could say, man, there's gotta be some sort of pothole on that road or something like that. You say, hey, that pothole, that, that, that road is not continuous, it's not differential, but there's some sharp uh, you know, holes in that road or something like that. So unless it's like freshly paved, then you're just kind of screwed there. But there's like a direct application of that mean value theorem. You can kind of even look at that in your book there is a pretty neat picture and stuff there.